Welcome to Sun Sleeping Conversions. I'm Tom and today I'm going to show you how to assemble and fit one of our standard kitchen units. This unit here is profiled to suit a VW T5 short wheelbase, but we also do a unit which is profiled to suit a Ford Transit Custom. In the worktop in this unit, we have a cut it for a SMEV 9722 combination sink and hob, and we have an opening here for a Waco CRX50 fridge. In the description below, you can find links of where you can purchase these items. Next to the fridge, you've got a large access door which gives you access to underneath the cooking area, but also into this dead area here, which will be obscured by your rock and roll bed or your seating system. We have a small drop down cupboard here for a little bit more storage. And then moving on to the rear wardrobe, we have a large roller door, which is very high quality. They've got rubber slats in between each join to prevent noise when you're traveling. At the bottom of this cupboard, there's another access door, which gives you access to possibly a battery if that's where you decide to put it. And there's also a small access door at the rear. So if you're outside the vehicle, you can lean in and grab something quickly out of there. So now I'm going to show you the assembly of our standard kitchen unit for the Volkswagen Transporter and the Ford Transit Customs. All of our kitchen units are very quick and easy to assemble by using these quick fit fittings. Each panel that has these fittings already assembled into them has a corresponding panel with holes drilled into the panel. For example, this panel here, the two lugs there, correspond to these two holes. That then is simply screwed together without the need to measure or drill anything yourself. When assembling the fridge section and the main cupboard section here, you want to make sure that the rear panels have these two lugs facing the back of the unit so you'll get a better fixing into the steels of the vehicle. So now I've assembled the fridge section, please be careful when you're assembling the unit that you don't over tighten any of the fittings. All you need to do is close up the gap, over tighten and might strip out the thread. I've used a torque setting 14 on my driver, but this may vary depending on what brand you have. So now we're going to assemble the main cupboard section. Again, like the first section, every panel has a corresponding hole, so it's easy to line up. You'll know which panel goes with which section because of the fact that the hole offsets are different on every panel. So now we're going to assemble the large cupboard section shown here. Now just remember, on this rear panel, like with the fridge section, you want to make sure that these lugs are facing the back of the unit so you get a better fixing into the steel. So now we're going to fit the cupboard door. The hinges on the door have already got screws assembled in them and they all correspond to holes drilled in this panel. So now we're going to assemble the final section of the lower tier, which is this panel here. First off, we need to assemble the door to the main section. Again, you've got screws already in here, which correspond to pre-drilled holes. So now we're just going to continue with assembly, again using the quick fit fittings to assemble this section, and then this section will be assembled to this section.
So now I'm going to fit the catch receiver on this door like we did on the main door. So I'm going to tilt this door back up and use this catch to line up the door. Now that is level, I'll now tilt it back down, hold that in place and screw it together. So now we've cleared the decks and we've made space to assemble the rear wardrobe section here. Uh, first off, we're going to assemble the door on the rear panel. The catch receiver on this is slightly different from the rest of the unit. Again, the screws in these hinges correspond to the holes which have already been pre-drilled in the panel. Where the rear door catches, the receiver will sit this way on this panel as opposed to how it has in the previous items. So now we're going to continue with the assembly of the carcass of the rear wardrobe. So now this is the door retainer to prevent this door swinging past its limit. We're using 4 by 25 mil screws for this to prevent any screws going through the cabinet. So now to fit the timbre door track, we're going to use this base panel which stops the roller door sliding out to dictate where the rail goes. So we just put that tight against the bottom, then we're going to push the track up to there. So now we're going to screw the track down into the panel and for this we're going to use the 3x13mm screws. So now we're going to attach the spiral to this panel, uh, making sure that we line up the gap here with the gap here centrally to allow the door to run in there smoothly. So now you want to repeat the process of fitting the track on the opposite side. For me to do this, I normally flip the unit over and it's just a bit easier to work on. So now we've fitted both the spirals and the tracks on both sides, uh, we're going to fit the roller door. So first off, we're going to remove this panel. And slide the roller door into the track. Then we can place this panel back in because it's going to act as a stop for the roller door. We'll secure this panel in place using the 4 by 25 mil screws. So now we're going to assemble the lower tier section to the main wardrobe section.
Okay, so now we're going to fit these corner blocks around this section and around this section to secure the lid onto this section and the worktop onto this section. When fitting these corner blocks, you want to make sure that they're sat level with the top of the cabinet and not sticking up proud. You can use another bit of timber just to line it up to make sure that you've got them nice and level. Then using the 4x15 screws, just screw into the cabinet. So now you just want to repeat this process all the way around this top section and on the lower section. I recommend using five fixings on the top section and ten on the lower section to make sure you get a nice strong assembly. So you also want to put two of these fittings on the underside of this worktop so we can pull the worktop into this face. So if you flip over the worktop, And we can flip it back over and access through this door to screw into that panel. So now we're going to fit the lid to the wardrobe section. I'm going to sit it on top. On this back rear corner you want the rear of this lid level with the back of the cabinet and on this corner here you want it to step forward about five millimeters so that you get a good fit where the vehicle contours in. On the front and on the side you want to space it out equal and then using the corner blocks fix up from inside into the worktop using the 4x15mm screws. So with the worktop we'll install that once the unit has been fitted into the vehicle. Um, other than that everything now is ready to go into the van. I hope you enjoyed the video. In the description below you can find a link of where you can purchase this item. If you have any further questions feel free to get in contact with us.